Hello everybody. Today I'm going to show you how we make our very own maple syrup from these soft maple trees without spending a bunch of money on fancy equipment. Stay tuned. I have always loved getting people out on a gravel road and letting them see the farm life firsthand. Whether it's in the field at our full-time farming jobs or here at home on our own little cattle ranch. So now I'll bring the camera along and you sit back and ask the questions. Let's explore this Midwestern farming and ranching lifestyle together. This is your channel. This is Dodge Brothers Farm and Ranch. Well, few things are quite as satisfying as dumping your own delicious maple syrup from your own trees over a nice hot stack of pancakes on your kitchen table. But sadly, many people, although interested in making their own maple syrup, never actually give it a try because they assume they have to have sugar maple trees, they assume they have to have super expensive equipment to boil the sap, and they're afraid it's just too complicated for them to figure it out on their own. But I'm here to tell you that if I can do it, you can do it. Okay, there's really only two things that you have to do to make maple syrup. You've gotta get the sap out of the tree, and you've gotta boil it until it becomes maple syrup. You see, maple syrup is just super concentrated maple sap. Now here in Northeast Iowa, we have a lot of soft maple trees. This is a silver maple right in my backyard. The only problem with silver maples as opposed to your hard maple trees like sugar maples is that the sugar content in the sap is a little bit less. So you're gonna have to do a little bit more boiling to get your syrup. Now you can go to the local farm store and buy yourself a maple sap tapping kit, but that'll set you back almost $100 or more for just three buckets and three taps. Guys, that's a terrible deal. Let me show you what we do. Okay, so I've got these plastic buckets and you wanna cut the ribs off one side of the bucket and then drill a hole for your tap to go through. This allows the bucket to sit really close to the tree. I just picked up these buckets for free from the local gas station that they get their donut icing in these giant buckets. One thing that's really important before you use anything to tap your trees is to make sure you get it super clean and sterilized. So I use LOC cleaner and a good dose of 20% bleach water solution before I use the buckets. Make sure you've got them really clean. Also, you wanna rinse them out very, very well before you use them for sap, because any off taste or any off flavor that you get in these buckets with the sap is gonna become super concentrated by the time you boil it down into syrup. Lastly, just peel these rubber gaskets out of the lids so that they fit a little more loosely on the top of the bucket and they're easier to get on and off. Now, one important thing about tapping trees is you wanna keep everything clean because if you introduce bacteria into the wound in the tree, that's going to seal the hole off and start the healing process too soon and your tap hole will dry up and quit producing sap. So that's why I buy these super cheap little taps that I throw away every year. They're only about 10 cents a piece. And that way I don't have to worry about getting them super clean before I use them next year. All right, we've got our buckets ready and clean. We've got our taps. Let's go ahead and tap some maple trees. All right, select a nice spot on the sunny side of your tree above a tap root or below a main branch and head into the tree at a slight upward angle. Make sure you're using a nice clean drill bit that matches the size of your tap and go in two to two and a half inches, no more than three at maximum. Run your drill bit on a slow speed and make sure you get all of the shavings out of the hole so they don't plug up your tap. Grab our nice clean bucket, grab our nice clean tap. I'm just gonna stick that tap right through the hole on the bucket and right into the hole on the tree. There we go. Take the hammer and tap it in. Now make sure you don't pound it in too far or too hard. Just get it nice and snug in the hole. And don't worry about those little specks of bark. We'll filter those out later. I just hooked my lid on two sides so that when I'm ready to dump it, since I can't take it off of this particular type of tap, I just tip it to the side and it runs out the side of the lid that I have left open. Guys, you gotta check out this tree I just tapped. I've never seen one run this fast before. Now the first year that I tried making maple syrup, guys, this goes to prove that you can use anything to tap a tree. 
I strapped old water jugs onto the tree, poked a hole in them, and I gutted out some old ballpoint pens and stuck those in the hole that I drilled in the tree, and it worked just fine. I still got sap, and I still made maple syrup. So don't let money be an excuse. If you want to give it a try, just use whatever you can get your hands on. All right, you might wonder, how do I know when to tap my trees? In the springtime, when the weather gets into the mid 40s during the day and down into the 20s overnight, this is the prime time for sap flow. There's something about thawing during the day and freezing hard every night that draws the sap up and then lets it flow freely the next day. If you stay below freezing, obviously the sap won't thaw out and it won't flow. And if it stays above freezing for long periods of time with never freezing at night, the sap doesn't flow then either. So look for that weather in the forecast that I call 40-20 weather. 40s during the day and 20s at night. That is perfect sapping weather. All right, now that we've got our buckets hanging on our trees, it's officially spring. The neighbors will know when they drive by. And now there's nothing left to do but wait. It's a good idea while you're waiting to get your boiling system set up so that once the sap starts flowing like it is already, you're not caught off guard and you're ready to roll. Now, we got kind of lucky because when we bought this acreage out in the country here, it already had a small old grain bin out here in the backyard. And I found that that works just perfect for a sugar shack. The way the roof is shaped on this little old grain bin just draws the steam right up and out the top and it works great. But if you don't have a grain bin, don't worry. I used to boil the sap in the garage and just had the door open and as long as there's a slight breeze, you won't have to worry. Just set your stuff up right next to the edge of the door and the steam will blow right out the doorway. It'll work fine. You'll just have to get creative on how you're going to boil your sap. If you've got an old stove in the shop, you can certainly do it that way. Now, if you have access to cheap or free firewood, your options are almost endless. I've seen a lot of guys build homemade wood-fired sap evaporators for virtually no money at all. If you've got some old cinder blocks laying around, you can stack them in a U-shape, put an old grate across the top of it and set your pans on there and run your fire underneath. You just need some way to keep that sap boiling until it becomes syrup. It takes 40 to 60 gallons of sap to make one gallon of maple syrup. So as you can imagine, that's a lot of boiling. So I did a farmer solution and just ran a line from my propane tank out to the sugar shack grain bin to run this double burner turkey fryer. Well, the sap is flowing like crazy. So let's collect some and cook it down. All right, if you're not able to boil your sap the same day you collect it, you wanna stick it in a cooler or some buckets in a shady area out of the sun. And I like to freeze some sap in the freezer and use those sap ice cubes to keep it cold. And then I put a shop towel in a colander and strain the sap through that shop towel to get all the little impurities out of it, like the little pieces of bark that I was talking about earlier. Boiling is sometimes the funnest part. You get to sit around with friends and chit chat, and you get to smell the wonderful smell of steam rolling out of your sap pans. Well, I'm hanging out with the kids in the grain bin here cooking maple syrup. Actually, we're cooking sap, and it's gonna become maple syrup. You like the smell, Kaylee? Yeah. What's it smell like? Toast. Toast, <laughs> it doesn't smell like toast. No, it smells like <laughs> It smells better than anything. <laughs> so I usually boil sap each night until I can't stay awake anymore and then I shut the boiler down and when it's cooled off in the morning I dump what's left into a plastic bucket and stick it in the fridge until I've got three or four buckets piled up and then I finish it into syrup. All right we've been cooking sap for a few nights now and so I've got three or four buckets in the fridge in the house of super concentrated sap that's almost syrup but not quite yet. So tonight we're going to put that in the pot and turn it into syrup. So at the bottom of this bucket, you're going to notice some stuff that kind of looks like dirt. And it's actually called sugar sand. And what this is, is it's some minerals and impurities from the sap that gets super concentrated and then settles out overnight after we get done boiling the sap. Okay, so I have learned from firsthand experience from screwing this up 
that it's absolutely critical that you pay attention almost the entire time when you're finishing the syrup. Don't walk away and let it boil for half an hour and come back because you might just ruin everything that you've done all week long. I did that one time. I didn't think it was close and I walked away for 15 minutes and came back and it had boiled over and burnt all over the bottom of the pan and it was all over the garage floor and there was flies in it and I was so sad. <laughs> I was mad and sad and really disappointed. So don't do that. Um, you want to be right by the pan almost the entire time because what I've noticed is when it gets really close to that 66 and a half, 67 percent sugar content, it foams up really fast and you got to turn the heat down quickly. Something kind of changes when it gets really close to the end. So what I like to do is I like to get it close and then I'll take it into the house and finish it all the way so that I can control the heat a little bit better on the stove top and it's just a lot easier right there in the kitchen uh, with the thermometer to keep checking on it and do it right. Guys, I don't know if you'll ever smell a better smell than this when you're boiling off the last of the sap and it's almost syrup. Ooh, so good. Okay, I went ahead and brought the stuff inside to finish it up because it went through the first big foam up. Um, it was just boiling along normally and then all of a sudden it just foamed all the way up to the top of the pot, which is extremely common, I've noticed, for when you start to get close to getting your syrup finished. So you notice behind me on the stove, I've got a pan of water right next to the pan of sap slash syrup that's boiling on the stove. You need to get your syrup finished, otherwise it won't keep properly. And to be classified as actual syrup, it needs to reach 66 to 67% sugar content. We don't have any fancy equipment for testing that, but what we do know is that the syrup is gonna boil 7.1 degrees hotter than water will. Now, typically water boils at 212 degrees Fahrenheit, but it depends on your elevation, it depends on the barometric pressure, and it depends on how well your thermometer is calibrated. I just use a cheap digital meat thermometer, but it is a good idea to grab a hold of it with something a little longer than the thermometer itself. Otherwise, you're gonna burn the hair right off your fingers. Now, it's a good thing we checked because this thermometer seems to be telling us that our water tonight is boiling at about 214 degrees. So let's check our syrup. So 219.3. So not quite there yet. We need to get to about 221.1 or two before I'll feel confident that our syrup is finished. Uh, so we'll just keep boiling away for a little while longer. All right, let's give it one more check. Okay, we just hit 221.5. We've got syrup, it's exciting. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna turn this off, leave it sit on the stove tonight to cool off. Tomorrow morning when it's cold outside, I'll dump it into a bucket, um, probably one of those two gallon buckets that I had uh, stored the pre-finished sap in, clean it up real good and put it in there and then I'm gonna stick it in the freezer. A lot of guys will filter it right now when it's hot and then bottle it. I found that over the last few years when I go to filter it, I lose so much syrup from what gets soaked up in the filter so I've figured out that I just put it in a bucket in the freezer and within just a week or two, all of that sugar sand and stuff settles to the bottom of the bucket and you can pour everything else off. And I actually just pour the sugar sand stuff into a very small container and then it that settles out and I'm left with even more syrup on top of that that I can pour off and use. And that has been the best way for me to get the sugar sand out of it because like I said, when you're filtering such a small amount, you lose a lot of your syrup to soaking into the filter. And then when it starts to cool off while you're filtering it, it won't flow through the filter and it just gets to be a real pain. So I found that it's just easiest to do it this way and I like to store it in the freezer. It keeps really well. All right, so how do I know when to quit making maple syrup? Well, there's a few answers to that question. First, if the sap quits coming out of the trees, you're done making maple syrup. Second, if the buds start to open up on your tree, you're done making maple syrup. 
there's something that happens when the buds start to open and it's a chemical change in the sap and it makes the sap smell horrible when you're boiling it and it makes the syrup taste disgusting when you get done making it. It's called buddy sap. And I tried it one time just to see if the buds had actually opened far enough yet and it was bad news. It tasted horrible. We couldn't get the taste out of our mouth. And you'll know right away when you start boiling the sap, after just a few minutes, the steam coming out of it smells like rotten fish. It's not a good deal. So when the buds open up on the trees, you're done, even if the sap is still coming out. And the third way to know if you're done making maple syrup is if you're just not having fun anymore. Now with our silver maples, we usually only get about a one to two week window of sap flow before the buds start to open up and the sap goes bad. So it's pretty rare that I quit having fun before I run out of sap. But there was one year when it stretched on for about five weeks and I started to feel like I just had to keep boiling because the sap kept coming out of the trees and I was getting tired from staying up late at night boiling sap. Finally, I just realized the whole point of this is to have fun and I'm not having fun anymore. So then it's time to pull the pails off the trees, yank the taps out, clean everything up and put it away for next year. Well, that's it folks. That's how we make our own delicious maple syrup relatively cheaply with nothing but a yard and a pasture full of silver maple trees. Thanks for watching, liking, commenting, and subscribing. I love to hear from you guys. If you have any questions or if you make maple syrup and you do it differently than we do, drop us a comment. I'd like to chat with you about it. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.